welcome back we have a 1998 ford mustang and we're gonna go ahead and get the rear brakes done normally if you look at your brake setup you're gonna see that the rotor is nice and shiny and that signifies that there's good contact between the brake pads and the rotor itself and obviously on this one you can see all the rust that's on it so this tells me that there's something wrong with this caliper whether it's a seize or hanging up piston inside the caliper or it could even be the slide pins on the caliper that just don't move and that's a very common issue when the dust boot breaks moisture gets in and rust just takes over so that's definitely a possibility but in our case we're just gonna go ahead and replace the entire caliper with a remanufactured one we just try to avoid any future problems if you're just replacing your brake pads on your Mustang all you have to do is remove these two 14 millimeter fasteners and it lets the caliper itself slide upward it's gonna leave the bracket in place but it gives you access to your brake pads and you can easily change them Now normally you would want some sort of a wire or a hanger to hold up the weight of the caliper because you do not want it resting on the rubber hose and you might damage it. But in the case of the Mustang it's actually attached to the emergency brake cable and that's holding the weight of the caliper so there's no strain at all on the rubber hose. And that's how easily the caliper comes off and as you can see you have great access to your pads. Now if you want to remove the rotor as well you have to remove the caliper bracket. So all you have to do is take off these two fasteners back here and that's how easy the bracket comes off and now you can remove the rotor. Now cleaning the hub is a very important step that most people may overlook. You want the hub to be as flat as possible so when you put the new rotor on it, it doesn't develop a wobble from being uneven. So just make sure you clean off any rust or contaminants that are on here and you won't have a pulsing sensation come through your brake pedal. New rotors must be cleaned by brake parts cleaner or just plain old soap and water. They come with oil on them from the store because they don't want them rusting while they sit on the shelf. So you can see the oil that's coming off right here on my towel and you want to make sure you clean both sides of the rotor. It's very important. Applying anti-seize to the hub is always a great idea. It's going to prevent the rotor from sticking the next time you have to remove this. And with the power of witchcraft, go ahead and install your brand new rotor. And look at that, it looks great. I love it. So here's the caliper bracket and hold on, let me get this out of the frame and much better. So here's the caliper bracket that's going to go back on the vehicle. If your fasteners have any rust or old thread locker on them, be sure to clean them off. It'll make them much easier to install and it'll let you achieve the correct torque specs. And I always prefer to put a little bit of blue thread locker on all my brake fasteners. The 
fasteners that hold down the caliper bracket to the knuckle have to be torqued down to 95 pound feet. Now, I don't have an actual torque wrench that goes up that high. I have this uh, digital torque wrench. But as you can see, once you install it on your quarter inch ratchet and then with the socket in place, there just isn't the clearance. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my 3 8 torque wrench, which only has a maximum of 85 pound feet. So after I reach that 85, I'm just gonna go back at it with a regular ratchet and just give it an extra turn. And hopefully I get somewhere in the ballpark. And yes, I know I really need to invest in a half inch torque wrench. And just because it's new doesn't always mean that everything's okay. And of course I decided to check out the slide pins and just as I suspected, it has some grease on it, but just, I don't think it's enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of extra caliper grease on here. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the top slide pin. Now that all of this is set, before I go ahead and put the pads on, I'm going to try to get the brake line off of the old caliper. And as you can tell, this turned into an epic fail. I just ended up rounding off the fastener. So I knew it was not going to be a good day after this. You know, I just tried whatever I can to get it off. And at the end of the day, I just failed and I threw in the towel and had to replace the line. While I was at my local auto parts store, I checked in about the banjo boat and they said it was one of those special order items and it was going to take a few days and all that. So I went to the back of the store where they had all these uh, miscellaneous, you know, fasteners and things like that. And they actually had this Dorman product, which looks really, I mean, the thread pitch is exactly the same. The only thing is different, as you could tell, was the length. But in this case, the length doesn't matter as much. You still have more than enough thread so here i am test fitting it and it fit great and i was able to torque it down to spec without any problems at all taking off this one fastener right here just makes easy work of moving their emergency brake cable off the caliper if you ever have to remove any brake lines, I highly suggest using a flare nut wrench. If you try using a standard wrench, you're going to round off the nut. Before you put your new brake pads on, make sure to compress the piston on your caliper using a tool like this. In my case, I did not have to compress the piston since I'm using a new caliper.
not forget about your copper washers. They go on the banjo boat. You need one on each side of the brake line. Why are why are other people's is that is the is the routers is the routers uh differential on um, how big the rim is? What are you talking about? Cause the 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 brake the brake on that one um Chevy it was way bigger than the Mustang. The uh, router? Every car is different. The rotor? Yeah. Yeah, every car is different. Huh. That one just happens to have bigger rotors on it. It's got a bigger brake system. And we're almost done doing the brakes on the Mustang. The final touches is torquing everything down the spec. Unfortunately, this lower boat, I cannot fit my torque wrench on, not with this spring in the way. So I'm gonna have to use a wrench and just torque it down as close as I can to what I torqued the top boat down to. And it was actually very easy to get the Mercy brake cable onto the new caliper. It turns out something's wrong with the Mercy brake. It doesn't really work all that well. So maybe that's why it was so easy for me to get it on. And after I got all this put together, I made sure to bleed out the brake system since I did open up the lines. Uh, hopefully you do not have to do this step and you didn't go through the problems that I did. And I'm sure we can all agree that the brake system looks much better now. It's a massive improvement. Now all you have to do is go ahead, put your wheel on and torque down your lug nuts. And today is not my day. We ordered a caliper from Smack Vance Auto. They were not able to deliver. We ended up just getting a refund. So we went to Old Smiley's and we got a caliper, but guess what? They gave us the wrong caliper. So we go to return it. We get another caliper and this time it's the correct side, but we put it on and I cannot bleed it for the life of me. It was actually leaking at the piston and air kept getting in. So we go to return it and sure enough, they didn't have another in stock. So we had to go to a different Old Smiley's. Third time's a charm, right? But this is perfect example of just because it's new doesn't mean it works. And that's it. So I hope you liked the video. And like always, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.